Welcome to a, I guess I could call it a bonus podcast episode of Dank Times Dinker Thoughts with Angelo Grosso. I had so much shit I wanted to talk about on the last podcast, but I didn't have time because, boy, some of those rants, dare I call them epic rants, just kept going and going. And by the time I finished, I had done over an hour and 20 minutes, which is crazy. And I whittled it down to whatever it was. I think it was right under an hour so instead of waiting to do a whole other episode i thought fuck it let me record uh kind of a bonus short but sweet you know leftover podcast i guess we could call this episode the leftovers i don't fucking know speaking of the leftovers one of my favorite shows of all time on hbo um so yeah let's continue with what i was talking about last week on the pod i think it was episode 53 Okay, let's see. Uh, I talked about the steel cage match. I talked about UFOs. Here we go. Oh, the gay list. Oh, that's hilarious. I just mentioned the leftovers, and now I'm talking about if I was gay, or if I was bi, or whatever. If I was on the LGBTQ, QAnon spectrum, whatever you want to call it. And I could choose, let's see. You know, let's cap it at five. If I had to pick five men that I could easily see myself having a loving, sexually crazed relationship, dare I say marriage and family, uh, these are the following. But I'll go with uh, Justin Thoreau first, considering uh, I made a reference to the leftovers. So let me go ahead and pull up the hottie that is Justin Thoreau. Thoreau may be my number one in terms of looks. The guy is just handsome. And if you look up the term hunk a hunk a man in the dictionary there should be a picture of him now if you don't know who justin thoreau is he is i believe he's currently married to jennifer aniston which let's face facts if it's between me and jennifer aniston it's no contest uh, you're gonna pick me right come on come on jennifer aniston is so 1990s but no jennifer aniston is still incredibly popular about justin thoreau he was born in washington dc he is, let's see, he was born in 1971. Don't make me do math. So he is, and his, he's 50, oh, he's exactly 50. Or he's 49 or 50. Anyway, you know, he, he looks good. He's hosted Saturday Night Live a bunch of times. I'm trying to think where you guys may have seen him besides the leftovers. Uh, you know, let me pull up. Well, they say he's known for Mulholland Drive. True, he was one of the stars, but I don't think that was one of his breakouts same thing with american psycho he wasn't in it much your highness that was kind of a shit comedy but he was in it charlie angels i don't remember that hold on i gotta take a quick uh ice break here mm, 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 mm. drinking trader joe's coconut ice coffee something i don't know you add a little bit of water to it you could add milk to it i suppose but i just added they said i think they said two to one water to coffee and that's what i did and it's pretty good but you know, I don't believe that IMDb knows what the fuck they're talking about. In my humble opinion, I fell in love with this man in the TV show The Leftovers. Ever since the TV show The Leftovers, whenever I see Justin Thoreau's name attached to anything, I absolutely will at least try to give it a shot. I know an Apple TV series, which unfortunately, I, I stream enough shit as is, and I'm paying for enough shit as is, I cannot add another one, so... Justin, we're going to have to miss each other on this one. But don't worry. You're still number one in my heart. But saying that, he may be number one alternate to my true number one, which is still Timothy Oliphant. And I've talked about Timothy Oliphant so many times on this podcast. As to me, he is the total package. He's got his humor. He's got his acting chops. He's good looking. He's... uh, he's just a chill dude i think that we we would get along swimmingly well 
and I imagine he and I would click on a lot of things that relationships need to have or relationships need to click on, if that makes any sense. Like, I can see him and I just constant ball-busting sarcasm, but, you know, with a little sexy grin, a little smirk on our face, you know, we know, we know what we're doing. And I, 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 I can see that he probably loves to travel, to shop, and I just think that Timothy Oliphant checks literally all of the boxes and for some of you you're thinking who the fuck is timothy oliphant uh justified deadwood he was on an episode of the mandalorian he was on the last season of fargo he's on santa clarita's diet yeah i would skip santa clarita's diet i watched it for him which he was great in but the show sucked dick and he did have a small 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 part in once upon a time in hollywood but the fact remains he checks all of the boxes. He's got brawn, he's got brains, he's got a sense of humor, he's got height. And he just, he looks like he's just chiseled out of sexy marble. And I just kind of want to rub myself up on like a bear scratching itself on a big tree, you know? I feel like Timothy Oliphant would bring me breakfast in bed. Whereas Justin Thoreau, you would have to ask. He would do it. Justin Thoreau would do it, but you have to ask. Oliphant, no, you don't have to say shit. He knows what's up. But moving on, Ryan Reynolds is number three, which, you know, I don't like having Ryan Reynolds number three. I think I will say 1A is Timothy Oliphant, 1B is Justin Thoreau, and then number two is Ryan Reynolds. And I'm not going to go over Ryan Reynolds' entire IMDb. You, you know who Ryan Reynolds is, Deadpool, you know. And the only reason he's not uh, number one is that he's, he's just a little bit, he's a little bit too much in your face. Like, I like more of a chill, relaxed guy, whereas I think Ryan Reynolds would be kind of an alpha guy, which is fine, depending on the situation. But sometimes, you know, I come home from a long day at work, I want a guy to just give me a hug, make me some hot cocoa or some tea, or roll me a joint or something, and talk about what happened in my day, Ryan? Don't you want to ask me? So that's maybe why Ryan Reynolds is a little bit lower on the list. But I absolutely would let him give me a back rub. But let's move on to the final two. Uh, number, let's see, what number are we on? Number three? <laughs> this is confusing to me. I'm losing track of my own hunk men here. Number three would be Oscar Isaac. The reason he's not as higher is I don't think he has a sense of humor. I'm not saying Oscar Isaac doesn't have a sense of humor. I'm sure he does. In fact, I've seen it. It's just a little bit more dry. I, you know, I put Oscar Isaac in the same category as other hunks like Mark Ruffalo. They're just a little bit too woke. And they, you know, they try to play that lefty, you know, whatever game in Hollywood because they feel like they have to. But eh, that, that's what brings them down a little bit. I like people that are more real. And that's why Thoreau and Oliphant are so much higher. Ryan Reynolds does something stupid like that too. Like he had apologized for where he and his wife got married like 10, 12 years ago. They got married at a, I don't know where it was. It was somewhere in the South. And of course, where they got married used to be a slave plantation. But, you know, you can't throw a rock in the South without hitting something that used to be a plantation. So I don't get it. My point being, I love Oscar Isaac. Uh, ever since I saw him in Drive, and then I saw him in Ex Machina, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Annihilation he was dope in. Of course, Poe Dameron of those shitty-ass Star Wars movies. Inside Well and Davis. I would say, uh, as a whole, uh, in terms of acting, he is the best overall actor on this list. Uh, but moving on to number five. Michael B. Jordan. Wow! I fell in love with him after watching him play Killmonger in Black Panther, which I think most people fell in love with Michael B. Jordan and thought, ooh, I bet he smells nice under the bed sheets. <laughs> I honestly was a fan of Michael B. Jordan way back when, when his first movie Chronicle and then Fruitvale Station. And by the way, if you ever wanna see our heartbreaking movie, watch Fruitvale Station. And he was excellent in Creed. Well, we can skip Fantastic Four reboot. Ugh. But uh, that's why he's a little bit lower on my list. Is he? He's not in the best of movies, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of Michael B. Jordan overall. I think he should have been, been, been playing Black Panther all along, not to speak ill of the dead, 
uh, of the dead, Chadwick Boseman, great actor, but, you know, I think Michael B. Jordan would have been a better Black Panther in hindsight, but maybe I'm only saying that because, as we all know, unfortunately, Chadwick Boseman died of cancer, which is still very upsetting to me, but, oh, not as upsetting as when they killed Killmonger in that movie. The rumor I heard is they're going to bring him back in Black Panther 2. He's not playing Black Panther, so... I don't know how they're going to bring Killmonger back, but Marvel doesn't give a fuck. They know uh, a cash cow when they see one. But Michael B. Jordan, hot as a motherfucker. The reason he's not higher in the list is I don't think he's as funny as the other ones. And he's not in the best movies. But yeah, Michael B. Jordan, you're in the, you're the uh, number five. And then we got Oscar Isaac. And then you got Ryan Reynolds, Justin Thoreau. And then my number one overall, Timothy Oliphant. But let's move on. So actually, before I move on, just I'm just going to tell you, send me who your top five gay list is. If you're a woman, I want to hear it. If you're a guy, I want to hear it. If you're on the spectrum and you want to throw everything at me, go right ahead. You know, I don't judge. You know, I took the test. I'm four or five percent gay. I get it. And all five of these guys, I would do all of the things I do to women with. So, um, <laughs> oh, boy. So, but let's move on to some other topics here, shall we? Let's have a look at my journal. It's been a little while since we've done this. And for those of you that do not know, what I do here is I keep a online digital journal on my phone. I add things periodically throughout uh, the day, the weeks, the months, and every now and then I remember that I have it and I decide to read it on the podcast. So. Without further ado, let's see what the last entry is. And again, I don't look at this shit before I record. So, first entry, what do we got here? Philip Seymour Hoffman is the true hero of the movie Magnolia. <laughs> He's a nurse taking care of an old fuck, gets burdened with this old fuck's darkest secret, stays on the phone with customer service for hours, deal with a hysterical, opiate-crazed white woman who disconnects customer service, oh, that was Julianne Moore, the much younger wife of the old fuck, and then has to deal with the Tom Cruise cult leader at the end. He's all of us. <laughs> I think I was trying to make an analogy or a comparison, or really I was just trying to think of a funny metaphor uh, for Philip Seymour Hoffman, who, like many great actors, passed away before well i mean he had a pretty accomplished career when he died but still you like to think he would have been in some banger more movies i mean he was really one of the top actors out there at the time and yeah i do remember the movie magnolia and yeah his role was all about helping the older generation deal with their shit that old man telling him all his secrets then he had to deal with that crazy julianne moore you know trophy wife and then Tom Cruise being the sex cult leader. I mean, Tom Cruise in that movie, uh, <laughs> I don't know how he didn't win the Oscar for that role. I mean, he should have, absolutely. I think he got nominated, but he should have won. But holy shit, Tom Cruise and Magnolia. <laughs> I mean, and that may have been the closest role that Tom Cruise ever took that was the closest to himself. Like, that role may have been the closest to it actually being the real life Tom Cruise is what I'm saying. The guy was a lunatic and just oozing that bro sexual alpha male hunter power over women make them your slave all that shit I mean it was so crazy um, I mean he would be doing quite well in today's society if this was a real person <laughs> But, god damn. But, yeah, Philip Zimmer Hoffman, man, he really had to, uh, he really was the one burdened with the entirety of that movie, if you really think about it. Um, I'll be honest with you, I wrote this entry a, a couple months ago, and whatever connection I had to it uh, is gone, so I feel like I'm just rambling here. But I do love Magnolia. Excellent film. And... Oh God! I I just re I vividly remember that scene with him on customer service. Just keep getting transferred and transferred, and he's doing this to help someone who treats him like shit. It's just a rich, white man that was power hungry and he fucked over everybody. I mean, just a scum. The trophy wife was scum. His son Tom Cruise was scum, and he's the best thing going. And he has to deal with all that shit, and they just shit on him. So, 
Uh, I could make an ageist joke there. I could make an income equality joke, but it's pretty low-hanging fruit. So what do you say we just move on to some other journal stuff here? Whatever happened to the band The Temper Trap? Uh, Temper Trap. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I keep talking about it. They sang the song from 500 Days of Summer soundtrack. Sweet Disposition, I think the song was called. Oh, yeah. Sweet Disposition. Yeah, I remember that fucking song. Temper Trap. Yeah, whatever did happen to the Temper Trap? Oh, well, let's see. Let me open up Google here and see. What happened to the Temper... Not Tenor. Temper Trap. Temper Trap. Oh, I... Well, there you go. A June 2013 media article revealed that the band were continuing to work on their third studio album. In October 2013, an official statement confirmed that lead guitarist Lorenzo Celilito parted ways with the band. Since then, the band has continued to play live while working on the third album with Damian Taylor. Oh, so they're still going? That's a misleading headline there. Okay, let's see. Well, let me open up their Wikipedia page. Discography. Is there anything uh, lately? 2016. And when did that jabroni leave? Let's see. 2013. So that was the last album. So wait, is there a fourth album? What are they talking about here? Oh, so the guy left during the recording of the third album. Lorenzo Celito, you could not wait until the album was finished. You had to leave. You stagazzi. I could just make up uh, Italian slang. They're Australian. Oh. He's an Australian greaseball. But what are they currently doing? Is that it? Are they done done? I think so. Thick as Thieves is their last album. Well, to check that shit out. So there you go, people. You'll learn something when you listen to your boy. All right, next one. The two medium episodes of the series, Surviving Death, are such bullshit. <laughs> I remember that funk ass bitch ass show. I don't think I actually finished it because the medium episodes pissed me off so badly. Uh, mediums being the ones that can somehow be a connector between the dead and the living, which I complete bullshit as I uh, rant about on here. Multiple times during a seance, I would hear them say specifically that they have to play music. And every time they would start to play music, the soundtrack to the movie Gladiator would play, I shit you not. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, these mediums that could only play certain music and they were playing uh, the main song from Gladiator. <laughs> that was a dank-ass movie, though. And why do mediums only have positive stuff to tell people? <laughs> yeah, just once. I like to see a medium tell someone, your dead husband is speaking to me and he's wanting me to tell you you're a fucking bitch, and he's happier dead than he was alive with you. <laughs> Damn, that was, that's pretty funny, Angelo. That's pretty funny. Oh, man. Every now and then, past Angelo has a pretty funny joke for present Angelo that he uses for future Angelo. <laughs> yeah, why Why is all the, all the uh, qu uh, answers they get from ghosts and seances and all that shit, like I'm saying, why, it's always so positive. Just once, just once, I'd like to have a loved one say, oh my God, now that I'm dead, I can finally lay into you. You're a horrible lover. I slept with your brother. I killed the family's gerbil because I was allergic to it and I was afraid to say anything. Okay, maybe not that last one. It was That last one was quite a stretch. But yeah, why the fuck is everything so happy in those things? I, in those seances, why is everything so happy whenever the dead are speaking? You know, that would be, that'd actually be a pretty funny movie is where uh, there actually is a medium but all he gets are like asshole pervert ghosts Ooh, there's your next comedy right there you could have someone funny being the medium you know you got to sell tickets here <sighs> who's so famous in the comedy world that even if they make a raunchy comedy like this and like the cancer culture cunts go after him it would still survive i feel like uh, jack black would do a pretty good job and Oh, and you could just have just a mother load of funny actors, comedians, stand-up comedians, what have you, be the ghosts or the or the loved ones trying to connect to their dead partners or dead children or whatnot. Oh, it would be so funny. This thing just writes itself. And maybe there's been a movie like this. There was that Ricky Gervais movie, Ghost Town, I think it is, but I think that was like PG-13. I'm talking, I want an R-rated raunchy comedy because they don't make those kind of comedy movies anymore, but eh. 
I digress, but uh, I think we got time for one, one more journal entry. All right, last one. New national anthem song. <laughs> wow, I haven't done a new national anthem song in a long time. Uh, so for my listeners who don't know what that is, uh, I don't know, probably a couple months ago, maybe 15 podcasts ago, fuck if I know, I went on a rant about how we need to update the uh, our national anthem song in this country because it's outdated and it's getting too political and brings in religion sometimes and it just you know we need a new one and instead of having some asshole try to write a song in the same vein as our national anthem i thought why don't we just play classic rock you know let's play some bruce springsteen let's play some bob seeger let's play acdc journey you know come on man like arena rock classic rock shit man maybe even some uh, yacht rock you know oh who's that who's uh Maybe some Genesis. Oh, God, dude. Ooh, Genesis would be dope. Fucking Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins. Goddamn geniuses. But this is another good song that I wrote down here. Ooh, ZZ Top is another one. And who's saying, You're gonna have to face it. You're addicted to love. Bump, bump. You know, that guy. Richard, uh... Oh, God damn it, I used to know all this shit. Anyway, we can add this one to the list. Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Fuck yeah, man. I love that song. Uh, I mean, that is a ballad. That is an anthem. Poetry, I would say. So, yeah, just come on, man. Let's update that shit. Enough's enough, okay? You wouldn't have to deal with, uh, you know, the crazy people on the right getting mad when uh, sports players take a kneel during the anthem and they make it so part of their life that they say, Oh, I, I stand whenever I see the American flag. Oh, my cock gets hard whenever I see the stars and stripes, brother. And then, you know, on the other side, it's, Oh, the national anthem is racist. It was written by slaveholders. And, you know, all that bullshit. But no, you wouldn't have to deal with any of that nonsense if it was Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Fuck yeah. And so with that, I think we can wrap up this bonus episode. Oh, there was one more thing two things but they're both kind of based on recommendations uh i just finished the second season of the animated adventure comedy final space the first two seasons are on hbo the third season is just wrapping up now i believe it's on tnt or tbs it could because tv stations are still a thing and i was a little hesitant to keep watching the show because i watched it a couple of years ago when it came out so the first two episodes and I thought it's too fucking stupid for me. It's too kiddish. It's not adult enough, whatever. So a couple of years later, I started to hear a lot about it again because the second season just wrapped up and it was amazing apparently. And I was asking these people who were trusted sources of information when it comes to recommendations for movies, TV shows, books, whatever. These are people whose opinions I, you know, somewhat listen to. Just like they listen to mine, I would like to think. I said, Final Space, that fucking show was so weird. And they, and they said, no, 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 you got to make it through the first couple episodes. I said, all right. So I rewatched it, knowing that I had to maybe watch five episodes compared to two that I did the last time. And I got to say, thank God I hung in with it because it is a really good show. It's kind of like a comparison between Adventure Time, Rick and Morty, and... Hmm, a little bit like uh, Cowboy Bebop, but not in the same style in terms of like animation style. Not th- not like Cowboy Bebop, but it, it, it takes its cues from that. And you have to get used to the main character because usually when main characters of a TV show or a movie or whatnot are like legitimately crazy or insane, there is a build up to it. Like if you're just presented in the first second of the show that this guy is crazy, it's going to turn you off. And that's what happened to me the first time. But I hung in with it and I got used to the main character. And now it's very important to the show why he is the way he is. You just have to wait for the payoff. And luckily, they didn't just pay it off right away. It worked its way up to it, which made it that much better, in my humble opinion. And the second uh, recommendation I want to say is for something I haven't watched yet. But he's one of my favorite entertainers because he's not just a stand-up comedian he's not just an artist he's not just a musician it's Bo Burnham 
and he has a brand new Netflix special coming out. Uh, actually, I think it's out now. I just haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It's called Inside. I fucking love Bo Burnham. Uh, Bo Burnham is his name. B O and then B U R N H A M. Burnham. I think it's how you spell it. Check his shit out. He is. Uh, it's hard to nail down exactly what he is. He definitely is a Renaissance man. He may not think so, but you know your boy thinks so here. So um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. He's taken, I believe, four years off of doing any kind of live performances. And that makes sense because I was wondering where the fuck has he been? His last stand-up special or whatever you want to call it. His last special came out on Netflix in 2016. And he's been in a couple movies since then. Um, I believe he's in Promising Young Woman, but I haven't seen that movie yet. I want to, but you know, I can't pay $20 to see it. Come on. Let that shit go down in price. I'll pay $5 for it, okay? I'm not paying $20. Fuck you, Prime. So, check it out when it comes out. I think it, I, I, when I release this, it's definitely going to be out. So, anyway, with that, I think we can wrap up this bonus episode. I just wanted to wrap up everything I wanted to talk about in the last podcast. But, you know, sometimes your boy gets it going and his uh, hormones get chugging. And he gets his menopause juices flowing and it's hard to shut him up. So I'm glad that we could put a nice little bow on this present of garbage. That is the Dank Times Danker Thoughts podcast, but uh, I shouldn't call it garbage. Uh, I continuously hear people tell me, oh, I listen to podcasts. It's great. And I assume everyone's just pulling my chain, but I'm going to have to start believing some people because I do see the numbers are going up, up, up for listeners. I mean, it's not crazy yet. I'm not letting go to my head or anything, but the fact that the numbers are going up and not down I think is a good thing. I uh, see when I post the updates on social media, I get a lot of activity on that. Not not as much as my memes, but you know, enough to keep me going. And I've always said that this podcast isn't for anyone else except me. Well, at this present time, it's just for me. Eventually, once I update everything here, I do want to start interviewing people, but I think that's a few uh, few months down the road, maybe if not more, because that's a, that's a big step to me. It's be one small step for mankind, one giant leap for Angela Grosso. <clears throat> well, with that, I think I can finally end this thing. Uh, yeah, I love you all. Take it sleazy and don't do anything I wouldn't do. 